We are now about halfway through our Factorio 1.0 tutorial series. This is now level three, which is the power plant level. I'm assuming in this level, we're gonna be learning about power production, in particular steam power. So I'm really curious to see if they've done any changes since years ago when I played the original tutorial, because I do remember electricity being one of those things that I struggled with early on, but once you get it, it's easy. So let's go ahead and get started and see what's changed and give you some additional tips. Here we are in the new level and we are indeed working with steam power today. So uh, our objective is to build an offshore pump at the edge of the water. And we've already got a couple materials here laid down for us, but it doesn't look like we have any other production of any kind. So I only have the starting materials in my pocket here to work with, as well as the couple things here laid down. And uh, so that means we'll wanna get power up and running as soon as possible so we can start automating mining, smelting, and then automation of materials. So let's go ahead and build that offshore pump. So one thing to keep in mind when you are placing your offshore pump, which the game doesn't explicitly tell you, is that um, offshore pumps, power, and boilers kind of go hand in hand. So you want your offshore pump to be near your boiler that you're gonna be planning on using for your power production. So you can see these little green outlines here show you exactly everywhere where you can be placing the offshore pump. But because I want it near the boiler, I'm gonna place it directly across from it here. So this is the boiler and the boiler is the product that uses fuel and water to convert that into steam. And then from there, the steam is gonna be going into the steam engine over here. The first thing we need to do though is build pipes, just like our objective is saying, to get the water from the offshore pump into the boiler. So to do that, we're gonna go back into the crafting menu, click on pipe, we'll create a couple of them, and we're gonna add the first one here. And you'll notice when I do that, that we ended up getting water filling the pipe. We can also see when hovering over it with the little uh, window over here that it says water is at 100 of 100. So we definitely know it's getting in there. Uh, the next thing we need is to put fuel into the boiler, which we conveniently have right here. So instead of actually mining coal by hand, what I'm gonna be doing is chopping down a couple trees just cause they're nearby. Plus we'll also need trees for the wooden power poles that we'll build a little bit later on in just a minute here. That seems like it should be enough fuel to get us started. So uh, you'll also tell that this red blinking fuel, uh, like gasoline pump icon indicates that it is out of fuel and so fuel needs to be going into it. And then these additional hazard signs here with the little cable cord looking thing indicate that these are electric products that will be requiring electricity and they're not currently powered. So that is something that we're gonna be fixing here in just a minute once we get power up and running. So first step, go ahead and take your fuel. In this case, I'm gonna do a half a stack of wood for now. And you can see it immediately lit up with a bit of a flame feature and that means it's working. But because we don't have it connected into anything, it's gonna stop because it has nowhere for the output to go. So our objective, build pipes to connect the steam output to the steam engine. So we've already got a couple pipes made and let's see, can we delete this? No, we cannot mine it. So normally you could just build some steam engines and directly place it opposite of this uh, pipe here at the boiler. But because we cannot mine this for the tutorial's sake, we're gonna extend the pipes with one more getting made right there. Now this is gonna be turning on in just a minute once we have a need for the power. And when I say need, what I mean is we have to connect it to something that's requiring power. So we've already got one power pole next to the steam engine and that's what we need to kind of connect everything. So from this first power pole that's already laid down, we're gonna connect it into the field uh, near the things that require the power. So you can see just extending this power pole there and then another one here will turn these materials on. So we now have electric mining and we now have an electric inserter. The coal is now getting placed into this box nearby, but since this boiler ends up needing the fuel, I'm gonna end up deleting these and redirecting the belt line to go in this direction here. And then again, for those of you who don't know, you can delete things. Anything in the game can be deleted. Oh, 
Let's kill these guys first. These are the enemy, of course. And uh, you can see these green little uh, boxes here indicate the health of my pipe. So apparently they damaged my pipe. Biters like to attack um, electrical things, in particular, like steam engine setups. So make sure this area is well defended once you can have the means to do so. Uh, but as I was saying, so you can delete everything and move things over and uh, it never has to go to waste. It just goes back into your inventory. And then uh, to delete something, you just hover over it, right click and hold for about a second and then it goes back into the inventory there. But we'll place that there so that way uh, the coal that is needed to power the boiler can get used by this inserter and fed into the boiler nearby. So the next thing we need to do is gather resources and build radars. So we need to build three of them. So that means I'm definitely gonna have to start mining more resources because I only have 10 more iron and nine more copper plate and the radars take lots of iron and lots of copper plate and we need three of them. Plus we should uh, probably worry about defenses as well. So we'll need some additional iron plate to worry about some ammo. So let's do some iron mining first. Let's grab uh, the electric miner and I'm gonna plop it down here. And then we're gonna grab the belt that we already have on hand. And I'm gonna just join it all the way over here. like that. There we go. And then all we have to do is add in a couple more power poles. And you'll notice that there is a finite amount of the length of the power pole. And you can tell they're connected because they'll have this orange copper wire. But if you go too far, that wire disconnects and you won't have the power. So make sure that they are definitely connected. And everything that requires the power has to be within the little blue field of the power pole that you can see when you hover over the power pole. So that now that this is powered, the miner is spitting out the iron ore here. And we can place a furnace with one tile in between the furnace and the belt. So we can place an inserter to be able to connect the coal and the iron ore into the furnace itself. We'll eventually want to add more to this, but I should probably do copper ore next. I've got one more drill, which I can place right there. I've got a little bit more belt. Oh no, spider incoming. For now, I will just feed some fuel by hand into the uh, furnace. So let's do right there. We'll put coal in there, and then we'll connect some power poles. So it doesn't matter if you start at the um, place of your steam engines or if you start further out, as long as the power poles get connected is what matters to make sure that we get power. So now you can see that this is powered here. We'll add in one inserter. I've already manually placed some coal in there, so that means this should start to work and feed me some copper plate. It is getting dark, so my engineer is suggesting that we build some lamps, which is a good idea. Um, lamps are a little bit expensive when I'm already this poor, at least uh, poor with copper, but I will produce about two of them. They're right here, and they are nice. They do have to be powered by electricity as well. In fact, most things do. Uh, but when you place it down, you end up with some light, which is really nice to have, especially at nighttime. So it looks like I have enough resources. I can build one radar machine by hand, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. But I did notice when looking at the mini map that there is a little blue box down here that I'm gonna grab because it does have a couple of resources that might come in handy and make me have to uh, do less crafting by hand. In fact, we'll use that wooden box. <laughs> Why waste resources? And then can I build any more miners? I can build one more miner, which I think we'll use to make more coal and that way the coal can get directly fed into the furnace over here so I don't have to do it by hand any further. I'm joining up the belts of the copper and the coal now and you can see that when you do that with one, uh oh, <gasps> uh oh, they have almost eaten my pipe there. Um, but anyway, you can see that when you 
flank a belt with um, one belt coming at it from a side and the other from another side, it ends up splitting the resources evenly uh, onto one half of the belt here. So you never have to worry about Cole accidentally getting onto the right hand side of the belt here. It's always gonna stay on the left and this copper here is always gonna stay on the right. And it's a really nice way to just evenly distribute your resources and make sure that they get where they need to go. So we'll place an inserter there. Now we can delete that guy because this inserter can pick up both copper and coal and feed it into the furnace. And then we'll just continue this on, make another furnace setup, add in another inserter, and now we have two. Let's do the same here with iron. Let's actually move this uh, furnace by deleting it because we can save a little bit of room by plopping it down right here. And that way we can add in another furnace just next to it there. And there we go. Now we have twice the smelting and twice the production. Now that we've created the one radar machine by hand, let's go ahead and plop it down. The radar machines are nice because it helps to give you some more vision beyond what you have in the mini map here. It kind of helps to um, explore the outside map for you. So let's plop it down there. Um, and then the radars are gonna be scanning the surroundings. The more of them you have, the faster you will able to locate the shipwreck. Ooh, okay, so that's a new feature. Um, of course, years ago when I played this, there was no shipwreck to explore or look for. So that's pretty cool. Let's see if we can build the two more radars by hand. Two more radars made, let's go ahead and plop them down. We can put one there. Radars consume a lot of electricity. Make sure your energy production is sufficient. Yes, okay, we'll do that in just a second here after we place the third one right there. The enemies might attack your radars. You might want to protect them with gun turrets. That is a good idea. So we've got a couple things to do. First of all, let's check our power production. Uh-oh, no, first of all, let's kill that biter. To check if you're making enough power, what you can do is click on one of the nearby power poles. And you'll notice these two bars up here. This one over here to the left indicates the satisfaction of your power. This one over here shows you how much you're producing. So looks like we are producing as much as we possibly can with the one boiler and the one steam engine, but we're not meeting all of our needs for everything requiring the electrical power. So we'll have to expand our power production. To do that, we can add in an additional steam engine, which we can do by crafting one. So a good ratio for you guys to remember, at least uh, when you're doing your initial steam engine setups, is that you should have one offshore pump, you can have 20 boilers, and then 40 steam engines. So just remember one to 20 to 40, and you'll have a very good setup with the equal amounts of fuel coming into the boilers, the perfect amount of water coming in, and the max amount of electro production that you can have. Let's add in our newly crafted steam engine here just to the back, it fits conveniently right there. You'll see that we have the power sign here indicating that we need to connect it to something. So once we get our power pole, we can connect it here. And now we have twice the power production with very minimal effort. All right, the game is saying this would go faster if I had more radars. I suppose that is true. Let's see if we can craft a couple more by hand. Uh-oh, one of the radars is under attack. Let's see if we can kill that fighter. Oh, another one incoming. Uh, they seem to like the taste of radars. I can fix the damage with a repair pack. Okay, cool. First repair pack getting built, which we'll need because this radar machine is getting damaged here. And then the pipe here um, is no longer there. That has been destroyed. So we'll have to uh, replace this pipe. Good thing I caught that or else we would have had no power. We'll add in another light here just so we can see better and we'll use our new repair packs by uh, hovering over the item we want to repair. We can see the health bar is just below it and then left clicking to repair it. And we'll do the same thing over here with this radar machine. I've got two more in my pocket. We can go ahead and place down. It really doesn't matter where, just have it kind of out of the way. But now we are up to five radar machines, which will mean we can scan the surrounding territory even quicker. Next thing we're gonna make are gun turrets because I do wanna at least protect my front line here, or at least the part of my factory that is closest to the attack of 
spiders coming in. So you can see on the map this red uh, square here and the nearby red smaller bits is where the biters have been coming from. So I'm gonna be placing some turrets that I made in my pocket there and there. That way they're gonna be between the biters and my factory and hopefully prevent my stuff from getting destroyed. So you also need to feed the gun turrets with ammo and I currently don't have that automated but I am gonna produce a bunch of it in my pocket uh, which can be done pretty easily because it just takes iron plate. So I wanna create the max amount of ammo that I can. So to do that over the crafting menu, just click left shift and then left mouse button and it will create the max amount in your pocket that you can given the resources that you have on hand. I now have 22 ammo, which you can see here filled up in my uh, pistol there, but I am gonna be placing it in the gun turret, which will be better used there than on my person. So I'm gonna do the full uh, half stack of what I had available in each of them. And that was just in time because you can see how effective it is at killing the nearby biters. And it has decent range. You can see when you hover over it, uh, the little green uh, circle around it is the exact range that each of these turrets can hit. I've got one more turret, which I'm gonna place just over here. And I don't have much ammo on me, but I'll go ahead and take the two that I do have and put it in the gun turret. Uh, just so it can better protect my front line. And radar scanning is done. That objective is done. Small shipwreck located to the southeast. Is that over here? Okay, good to know. And just like that, we were able to beat level three. I hope you guys will join me for level number four, which will be next time. See you then, bye.